Housing transactions in the greater Toronto area plummeted by 50% and new listings jumped by 22% in the first half of June compared with the same period last year. That's according to numbers from the Toronto Real Estate Board. So is the 15% tax on foreign buyers and expanded rent control rules introduced by the Ontario government working to cool down the red hot GTA real estate market? And more importantly, will this new calm last? Who better to ask than Don Campbell, senior analyst at Real Estate Investment Network. Nice to have you here in person. It's great to be here. It's, yeah, it's thank been you. a while. Yeah. So let me let me start off with just uh, the numbers I just talked about. Uh, transactions down by half, new listings up. You've got on the ground intelligence. What's going on? It's exactly what we expected to happen. Whenever, uh, and we've studied these markets for 25 years, so whenever a new legislation comes in as designed to do whatever the government thinks that he wants to do with the, with the market, what, they, what happens is everybody jams their brakes on and go, well, how is this going to play out? How is this going to affect me and my house and my investments, et cetera? So everybody stops for a few months and lets things settle out because, frankly, when they made the announcement, they didn't have the legislation even written. So... Now you're starting to see uh, uh, the, the people who are the panickers, the speculators, throwing their, their, mar their properties on the market as you're seeing the listings up. And the buyers and the investors and the home buyers are going, I'm just going to wait a little bit to see. And now that's where, it, what, where we're sitting. It's exactly the same thing when BC changed their rules. Uh, exactly the same thing happened and historically it's always happened this way so there are no surprises let me ask you then let's just just talk a bit about Vancouver then so mm -hmm. what happened in Vancouver is everyone did the same thing hit the brakes we saw listings go up transactions down but now what now if you've gone back you know we go a few months beyond what's happening can we expect the same in Toronto well we're this many months in in Vancouver and now the market is hitting record numbers again and volumes are up and 100,000 tr transactions. And, and what we did see, though, with the 15% the foreign buyer tax, which the Ontario government knew would happen, is it's mostly on those single families because that's where the foreign buyers are coming to park the majority of their money. Yes, there are a few buying condos, et cetera, but generally it's those single families. So that's why you started to see those come off. And now, frankly, if you do the math, those have come off on average sale price more than the tax so the foreign buyers go, whatever, it's the same amount of money now. I just have to rate 15% to the government instead of to the, to the seller. Mm -hmm. So inevitably, that will play out that it'll have a pretty nominal effect overall. So you're seeing, it's interesting, you're seeing this, the effect on the single detached homes, but mm -hmm. condo prices, um, this is the first time now we're seeing condo prices, I think since 2010, start, the, the pace of, of price and growth start to really move up. Isn't that funny? We're, we're now registering things and oh my goodness, it hasn't gone up 15%. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it's interesting when you see all those listings come on, people are being a little bit more patient on their buys. They're being a little bit more strategic on their buys and therefore the lower prices properties are still churning and, and moving. And the higher prices are the higher price properties are slower, mm -hmm. so that is basic math. When you got lots of small numbers and fewer big numbers, and you divide it by the number of transactions, you get a lower average sale price, and that's why we're starting to see a, a, a slowing in pace. This will not last. You know, we, we tend to focus very much on the uh, on the the foreign buyer tax, the effect on single detached and, and single, uh, or excuse me, the. Uh, uh, detached homes. What about rent control rules? Hmm. We've got a chart here. I want to bring it up. Uh, I think it's fascinating. This is one that you've highlighted. This takes a look at the number of owners with more than one uh, property in the greater Toronto uh, area. And what does this tell you? This is interesting. This graph actually came from the provincial government. So they produced it and so they know these numbers. And if you look at the, the far right hand side, it's showing 120,000 properties or 120,000 people have an extra unit mm. in the GTA. Well, that's a hundred and let's say a hundred thousand of them are now rented out. Mm. They know that data. They know that the individuals have been providing a buffer in the rental market because nobody's been building rental property specific apartment buildings. And then they start hitting them with these rules and these regulations. So that's why people are selling. Therefore, there's going to be fewer rental properties over the next five years. And with the rent controls, the people who are going to build apartment buildings, rental apartment buildings, have now taken them off the table. So these rent controls, how they implemented them and who they targeted, actually are going to drive the rents up starting 
a year from now and then into perpetuity until they change. The person who's impacted by this, probably from the sounds of what you're saying, is perhaps that they're targeting trying to make things more, you know, for renters to make it better. Sure. It could actually have the opposite effect. If you extrapolate it out and you start to look at the reality, if you have fewer uh, numbers of rental properties and you have more in migration, guess what's going to happen? it has to, rent, the street rents are going to go up and they're going to really start skyrocketing. Is that the period of normalization? And I'm just asking mm -hmm. to be apolitical Please. here. So if, if you see that, that change, you said, so there's, there's less supply in the market, yeah. prices go up, but does that normalize after a few years? Like does, it, does it start to get back to where it was or not? Sure, uh, it, it will, um, as long as you're allowed to continue to build uh, multifamily apartment buildings, not condos. Right now it makes more sense just to build a condo and sell it off. Right. But on, on apartments, once the rents hit another higher level, then it starts to make sense on the builder spreadsheets. Right now with the rent controls, we needed, we, I'm not a builder, but the, the, the supplier of rental properties needed at least three and a half, four percent average increases in rents to in order to justify the bank financing and the ability to build on land because right now with the Places to Grow Act, there's not a lot of extra dirt around to be yeah. building. So the dirt is getting very expensive. It's expensive to finance. And we know for a fact that the interest rates are going to go up. So at the end of the day, yeah. it's going to hurt the renters. Let me ask you then just to, to sum it all up. Sure. I, I, you know, if you take a look at uh, the greater Toronto area, let's say two, three years from now, what do you see? What do you see the market like? I mean, is this a good time to buy? And I know that completely depends on the person who's doing the buying exactly. and the circumstances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that right now, if you have a five year plus window, you know you're gonna live there, you know your lifestyle is going to be in that unit. And you know what? You can negotiate a good deal right now, probably even a better deal next month uh, as you head, head into summer. Um, five years from now, the market, the rents will be a lot higher. And uh, at the same time, even if the values are flat, if the rents are going up and you buy your house now, you're still gonna be ahead because you've paid your mortgage down. Thank you very much, Don. My pleasure, thank you.